Hello and welcome to my second Maya tutorial. Today we're gonna cover some basic modeling techniques, tools and surfaces. What are we gonna create? Well, I thought a bit about it and we're gonna go for a simple Harley Davidson motorcycle. We're not gonna go into every little detail because, well, one, I don't think I have enough time to record the entire process making all the little bolts, rivets, motor pieces and so on and so forth. And second, it's not really necessary. As long as you get the idea behind modeling in Maya, the rest is pretty much up to you. You can easily do it on your own. Makes good practice also. After we finish with it, we're gonna go in and texture it. But that's gonna be covered in the next tutorial, probably sometime in the first half of the coming week. But anyway, before we go into the actual modeling, I wanna talk a little about the three types of surfaces which you can work with within Maya. I for one use mostly polygons and what I mean by that is that pretty much 99% of the time I go for polygon surfaces. I just find it easier to use in just about any situation, even organics. I'm old school like that I guess. First let's start with NURBS. You can access different NURBS surfaces by going to create, NURBS primitives and just select, select one from the list below. Or you can either go to the surfaces tab in the shelf and just select one from there. We're gonna go with a sphere. Just press 5. Okay. Now, this type of geometry is basically meant for creating stuff like bottles, lamps, bases, basically rounded or organic stuff. Why is that? Well, because basically with a NURB surface, you can't have hard edges. Now, let's start to model the sphere. If you right click it, you can see that a bunch of buttons pop up. These are basically the things that you can control in a NURBS primitive. Isoparms. Let you select, <clears throat> let you select one of the edges, and even lets you introduce another one by simply going to Edit NURBS in the Surfaces submenu over here, and just click on Insert Isoparms. All right. If you want to add that button in your shelf, so that you don't have to search for it every time, you can simply go over it with your mouse, press Control, Shift and then just click on it. Alright? There you go. You can make a custom shelf with whatever tools you want by going over here where this little arrow is, click on it, click on new shelf, type in whatever name you want for it and then click OK. After that you're free to add whatever buttons, tools, etc. you want. It's a pretty cool thing to have. If you want to remove certain tools just go to the shelf editor over here and change whatever it is you want to. Let's say we want to delete or remove the insert isoparms button that we recently added. All right, Just click on it and then just click on this little trash can that we have over here. And there you go. All right. Okay now if you actually want to edit the shape of this NURB surface you have to either select the control vertex button or the hole button. The control vertex button lets you edit each vertex or point of this object. All right, you can either pick one or more. And the whole <clears throat> the whole button lets you edit the actual edges of the object, which is basically a collection of vertex points. You can translate, resize, rotate, whatever. Now, <clears throat> before we go on to the subdivision surfaces, I want to tell you guys what the numbers 1, 2 and 3 do. These are basically keys that offer you a preview of your object, from the very basic low poly one by pressing 1, to the high poly version of your object by pressing 3. 2 is something in between. What I like to note is that with polygons, when you do this, you don't actually modify the topology of your object. It's just a preview. If you render it, you'll see that it will actually render the real, actual geometry. Okay? Okay. Now that we pretty much covered the NURB surfaces, let's check out the subdivision surfaces. To create one, you simply go to create, <coughs> subdivision primitives, and just click on, on one. You can also find them in the subdivision tabs. Okay, let's move this out of the way. Resize it a bit. <coughs> okay, subdivision surfaces are, well, sort of a combination between polygons and NURBs. You see that if you right click it, you'll get a bunch of buttons, one of them called polygons. In this mode, we can actually see that this object would, what this object would look like if it were converted into a polygon surface. If you want to go back, you can click on standard. Now, same with the polygon surface, we can muck about with the vertex points, 
edges or faces. And if you want to have more things to work with, you can choose to display fi the display finer button. All right? Or the coarser if you want to go back to a low poly version. In other words, a subdivision surface has the quality of a NURB surface, round, no hard edges, though you can actually add creases, plus the actual control points, buttons, which a polygon surface possesses. It's a mix between the two. Okay, now that we've finished with the NURBs and subdivision surfaces, let's get the actual modeling into motion. At the same time, I'm going to explain how the polygon surfaces work, since it will be pretty much the only type of surface I'm going to work with. Okay, now, if you look in the video description, you can actually find the reference that I'm using. What I'm looking at now is basically a Harley-Davidson XLH Sportster, Sportster 1200. Now, this <clears throat> motorcycle looks pretty damn cool, if I do say so myself. And as I said before, we're not going to go into too much detail with it, because as you can see, it, it, it has a lot of bits and pieces. So we're just gonna occupy ourselves with basically the more or less big picture of it, the general stuff. Anyway, um, let's start with, let's see here, the wheels. Yeah, let's go with the wheels, with the spokes and whatnot. Okay, so um, let's actually, let's start with the spokes. Okay, so we're gonna go with a polygon cylinder. We're gonna drag it about here in the viewport. Press five, resize it a bit, just a little bit. Okay. Now, we don't actually need all of this geometry. It's just way too much, especially for something this small. So <coughs> we're gonna go, gonna go over here into inputs, and instead of twenty, let's go for something like I don't know eight. Yeah, it should be enough. Okay. After this, let's resize it a bit more. And okay, let's make it a little bit. Uh, God damn it. Okay. Something like that. Anyway, what are we going to actually do with it is basically duplicate it in such a fashion <coughs> that, that we actually get that circular spoky thingy aspect that we want to, alright? <clears throat> now, I really don't know what I'm gonna get, so bear with me. Anyway, to do that, we first need to actually rotate this on the x-axis by about 90 degrees, set it to zero, okay. Now, what we need to do is actually center its pivot point at its base and then snap it on a grid. How you're gonna do that? Well, we press insert and by pressing X you can actu actually center its pivot point on the grid over here. By pressing V you can actually snap it on the geometry. All right. So after we snap it over here somewhere on its bottom, we let go, press insert again after this, we press X and just snap it over here on the grid. All right. Okay. Sorry about that. My phone decided to rang. Anyway, now we actually need to duplicate this. So we just need to go to Edit, Duplicate Special, click on this box, and we're gonna get this icon. Okay. Now, over here at the top, we're gonna copy it. All right. Over here at the bottom, under it. We're gonna parent each and every copy to the original object. All right. Over here, <coughs> we actually need to rotate this on the y axis. We have x, y, and z. All right. Say we're gonna make like I don't know. Let's go for 30 copies. All right. We actually need to split this number. Actually, no. We have to split 300 all 360 degrees on 30. All right, so we actually come up with something like 12. So at each 12 degrees, a new object is going to be duplicated. All right, so we actually come up with something like this. Boom. All right. 
Now, <coughs> always, uh, uh, always remember to delete the original because there's a, there's always going to be an extra. All right. Now uh, we actually need to let's combine these by clicking on this button over here, so that we don't have to go and select every each and one of them every single time. Okay. Um, I'm not a very big fan of this look, so let's play with it a little. Uh, let's duplicate this. Just place Control D, and it's gonna make a copy of it. And let's rotate this a little, just a little, something like this, to give it a little bit of flare or bling. I guess I don't know whatever you want to call it. Um, Okay, guys, I think this is it for my first part. I'll catch you in the second.